not always easy to separate the dual cab segment because on paper, so many of them have got specs that match up against each other, but Nissan has made that easy for us with the Navara, which of course has a coil spring rear end as opposed to leaf springs. So mechanically, there's a big difference there to start with. And in theory, as we've always said, Navara promises to be a quality offering on road. Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at the Pro 4X variant, which is outside of the Warrior, the top spec Nissan Navara that you can buy. The only tweaks in recent times for the Pro 4X are heated seats with power adjustment and lumbar support, which comes with a reasonable $600 price rise. The previous model's manual seats were comfortable enough, but heating and electric lumbar adjustment has lifted the cabin comfort a notch or two. As such, our tester starts from $58,730 before on-road costs. Zero options for our test truck mean the indicative driveaway price at the time of testing was $63,735. Pro 4X is, as the price and status in the range would indicate, well equipped. You get all-terrain tires, black fender flares, roof rails, door mirrors, side steps, grille and door handles, black 17-inch alloy wheels, a tow bar, black stainless sports bar, tub liner, and a full-size spare, of course. The last Pro 4X I drove was white, and I like that colour, especially in Australia, but it's hard to argue with the attraction of the eye-catching burning red paint. We focused in on around town manners for this test with the usage of the regular buyer in mind. We know from previous tests that if you're towing a heavy trailer, for example, the Navara's 2.3 litre engine can't match the best in the segment. However, with 140 kilowatts and 450 newton metres on offer, the Navara can get around town without ever working hard. The peak torque figure being available so low in the rev range means it always feels punchy in traffic, whether you need to get moving speedily from rest or roll onto the motorway. There's a clean surge of punch from down low that keeps delivering to up near the red line. Navara will happily sit on 110 kilometres an hour all day if you want it to and remain efficient while doing it. If you like the idea of family road trips on the weekend, the Navara will make light work of touring duties. You also get a robust tub liner and quality tie down rails. For those of you who actually use the tray for transporting items, the tie downs will come in extremely handy. One of the things we've always liked about the Navara from when this variant was first launched is the quality of the cabin. I think Nissan was really, really smart to make Navara's cabin feel more like a Nissan SUV than it does a work truck. In fact, you could argue it was probably one of the first dual cabs to head down that road. It's not perfect in modern terms because when you compare this against the brand new Ford Ranger, things like the infotainment system, the size of the screen, the technology that's in it, they've all been now superseded by the best in the class. But that's not to say that what's in the Navara isn't quality and doesn't work because the opposite is true. What you get actually works, even though the screen's not massive, we've found CarPlay to work really well. The technology is easy to understand, the switch gear is all neatly laid out, and this remains a really enjoyable dual cab to spend time in. Now you'll hear us say it often, but I reckon if you're transporting adults around regularly, you're best off to consider these dual cabs, and that goes for most of them, as occasional transport only, because there really isn't a lot of room back here. That's my driving position there, and I do have room. I can get my feet under the seat. Uh, my head's not hitting the roof, and I've got enough shoulder room, even if there was another adult there next to me. But it's not the most comfortable place in the world and you wouldn't want to spend a thousand k's back here on a long road trip. You do get though air vents and a USB charger and as I said if it's not adults, if it's younger kids or teenagers this will be fine. If it's adults you're transporting though I reckon you should be looking at an SUV. We've said with the cabin of the Navara before that one of its strong points is that it feels more car-like when you're behind the wheel. And that's true, but not necessarily of the way it drives. It does feel like a dual cab when you're driving. I suspect that initially we would have thought that the coil spring rear end would have made a bit more of a difference than it has, because something like the Ford Ranger that still has leaves, which is really the pick of the segment now, uh, still feels better and more accomplished on the road than the Navara does, but this rides really well. It settles down with a little bit more weight in the tray, as most of them do. And in terms of steering, braking, 
and what it feels like when you're behind the wheel, plus when you're on a long distance road trip, the Navara is a really good option. Now, if you stay up to date with drive.com.au, it won't surprise you that there are newer, better dual cabs on the market than the Navara because it has been around for a little while. But with the delivery times of new cars and the stock shortages that we're going through, there's a couple of factors to keep in mind. One, it pays to keep your options open. And two, just because this doesn't sit at the head of the segment doesn't mean it's not still a really strong offering. I like the fact that it's got a leaf spring rear end. I like what that offers you if you're in the market to make some modifications to go off road. And I still think the fact that the Navara has a pretty car-like cabin makes a big difference when you spend a lot of time behind the wheel. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like if you've enjoyed the video. Click on subscribe so you stay up to date with all of our latest dual cab review content. And the full review of the Navara Pro 4X is over at drive.com.au.